Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I've got for you a brand new EVSE. In fact, it's so new, it's not even on the market yet. So what this is right here is a Charge It brand universal mobile charger. Now, of course, we know it's not actually a charger. The charger is built into the electric vehicle. Uh, this is an EVSE. It's the equipment that supplies the electricity to the vehicle, and it does it safely. There's a device inside so that there's no electricity flowing until it's all the way connected to the car, uh, some other safety features. That's the basics. But then if you want to get a little bit fancier, you might have a lower power one, a higher power one, and from there kind of the sky's the limit in terms of you know, other bells and whistles. So recently I was uh, contacted by the company that makes this, and they said, uh, hey, we've got a new product. We would love to send you one and just have you take a look at it, tell us what you think, and uh, you know, just show it to your YouTube audience. And I thought, yeah, okay, great, send it to me. So there's your full disclosure is they, they just sent this thing to me, um, didn't give me any particular direction other than, hey, take a look at it and share it. Uh, one reason why, of course, is this company actually has a Kickstarter going on right now for this device. So I'll uh, send you that way. I'll have a link right in the video description for that. So let's start with the basics. This unit here is a 32 amp unit. It'll run on 100 to 240 volts. Uh, it'll also run 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, this is really designed as a universal model. The whole idea being that, you know, you can run it on a whole large range of voltages, uh, a range of frequencies. So it's pretty good for, you know, whatever electricity you happen to have in your part of the world. Uh, it feels solid. Um, there's kind of a nice uh, rubberized grip to it. Um, the cable itself on here, there's a 20 foot cable. Uh, it feels good. It's maybe a little springy, uh, more springier than flexible, but in a good way. Uh, and then of course, on the other hand, where we've got the holster, the J1772 connector, um, it feels hefty. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break. It is not cheap plastic. It's got the nice rubber grip. Uh, another thing I really like here is that the, the actual hook that clicks into the car, uh, that is metal. It feels really, really solid, very hefty. Uh, there's also a spot for a lock in here where you can plug your car in, put a little luggage lock through there and, you know, lock it in place. Uh, and that's also metal. It doesn't feel like, you know, it's going to be some cheap plastic that somebody can just break anyways. This unit did come with a case. It's zippered, it's padded, uh, it's pretty attractive looking. Uh, if you travel with your EVSE, you definitely do want to have a case just to keep it from getting beat up, bouncing around in your car. Um, also nice just to be able to, you know, keep the cord wound up and everything. Uh, but I do like the case that came with this. So I do want to mention that this is a pre-production model. Uh, when they sent it to me, they called it a prototype. I don't think that's the right word though. I mean, it, it, it's a good looking product. I mean, it looks and feels really good. There's no 3D printed parts on here or anything. This all looks like nice, good quality, modern manufacturing. So let's uh, get into some of the things that make this more interesting than just a really basic plug into the wall EVSE. And frankly, what I use for charging uh, my electric car every day is actually uh, this one right here. Uh, this is a Amazing E EVSE. Um, it's up to 3.8 kilowatt. Uh, this one goes up to 7.5. Uh, it's got a little short cord here that it kind of hangs from unless you put a screw in the wall to hang this. Um, it, it's great, but it, it's dumb. I mean, you just plug it in and it, it charges and that's it, which is fine for the most part. Um, although I'll show you later something that I did so that I was able to get more information to kind of uh, make this EVSE even better. Um, actually, the parts inside here are by Clipper Creek, so if you want just a real nice basic EVSE, good for travel and that sort of thing, uh, check out the amazing E. I do have a video on that one. But essentially, it's just very basic. With our unit here, what's interesting about it is it's got some smarts to it, and it also has interchangeable ends. So if we look at the end of this, it's just kind of one solid unit. 
and we've got a NEMA 1450 connector at the end. But aha, here's the magic. I can press these release buttons and pull it right off. Uh, so this is really a kind of an ad adapter. Uh, and then what I can do is I can put a different type of a connector on there. Uh, this one happens to be a 30 amp 240 volt connector. And both of these connectors are common at places like campgrounds. So if you travel, this is the nice sort of thing to have. Um, it unhooks and goes back on uh, very easily. I will say there's a button at the top and the bottom, bottom for the release. So just make sure that when you swap connectors, that uh, it's seated all the way, that both of those are snapped into place and then it's, it's really rock solid. Um, this isn't necessarily uh, an original concept. When I first saw this, right away, it actually made me think of what Tesla did. This is the older version of the Tesla mobile connector. Um, I've always liked these because it's a very small unit. Um, it's got this nice sleek uh, connector on here. Um, but what's interesting about it is that there's an adapter built right onto the end. You can press the button, pull it off, and swap it out for something else. Now, besides the pins for um, power right here, uh, there's also one that essentially tells this what kind of a connector is plugged in there. And what it'll do is cause the car to only draw the appropriate amount of current based on what you're plugged into. And that's also exactly what the charge it unit here does. Now on top of that, it does some other things too. It will actually um, analyze your electricity, if that's the right word. Um, it's going to pull up what your voltage is. Uh, you can set on there um, a minimum voltage. This could be really nice if you're, I don't know, let's say you've got a weekend cabin, your vacation home, that maybe the electricity there is a little bit lower voltage because um, you're, you're at the end of the transmission line. Um, some other EVSEs might just say, sorry, nope, we're not gonna work with this. Um, that's adjustable, so you can kind of take care of issues like that. And it's actually built in as a feature. I actually do like that the unit just has uh, the power connector built right in on the end. Um, a lot of other compact EVSEs have a little short cord that kind of drives me crazy because most of the time they're about that long and you don't really want your EVSE hanging straight off that, but how you mount it, it just gets a little goofy. Um, I plugged this in and it looked good. It felt very solid, plugged straight into the wall. Now I've just got the one uh, swap out adapter for this. Um, well, one spare one. Um, these are actually being offered with, I think it's like 32 different connectors. So essentially anywhere in the world that you live and any electric outlet that you have, there's an adapter that'll just go right onto the end of this. Now, a couple of them do have that little bit of a pigtail cord, uh, but predominantly they're just these nice compact hardwired ones. Uh, this company also does have a version for the European market, which will do three phase. Uh, there's some connectors there that would look a little bit different to us here in North America. Um, and another thing that I noticed is that they did design this unit so even in places where it would kind of hook in on a funny angle, the body of the unit does not get in the way. The Charge It Universal Mobile Charger does have the entire alphabet soup of certifications. Uh, that's one thing people often ask is, hey, is this particular unit UL listed? Yes, this has all those various worldwide uh, certifications to it. Now, another thing is this has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Amazon Alexa capabilities built into it. Um, I do not know if it actually has a GPS or not, but it does have geolocating built in. Now that may just run based on your Wi-Fi. I'm not positive on that. But what's really cool about that is you can do presets. So for example, let's say you use this as a mobile charger at home and at work. And let's say you've got um, a different maximum current you can use at home versus at work. Well, it knows where you are. So when you plug it in, it's just going to uh, default to that setting for you. So you don't have to mess around with it every time. Uh, pretty cool feature right there. Now, a lot of these features are all going to be through uh, an app. So either an Android or an iOS app. Uh, now, because this is a pre-production unit, I unfortunately do not have the app. So I can't test out 
um, a number of those features. And unfortunately, those are some of the cooler features. Uh, so you'll, you'll just have to check out their Kickstarter page for details on that. Uh, but one that I thought was really interesting was power split or power sharing. So power sharing is kind of a neat concept. Uh, the whole idea is that um, if you have more than one EVSC, uh, to be able to essentially split the power between the two, and to make that work, they need to be able to communicate with each other. So let's just say you've got two cars. You pull the first one in, you plug it in and start charging at full power. Sometime later, another driver comes over, goes to plug in the car. Well, you don't want that also pulling full power and then blowing your main fuse or causing other trouble. But with power sharing, as long as the two EVSCs can talk to each other, the first one can throttle down so that the second one can still charge. Now, yeah, they're gonna be charging slower, but they'll still keep charging. And since most of us just charge overnight, that's fine. We'd much rather have both cars plugged in. Um, but let's say you come home in the middle of the day and you happen to need a charge. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to just throw the car on charge, have it charge at full speed, and not have to think about when it's charging fast or slow or anything like that. Now, there are a couple of systems out there already that you can get for your home uh, that have that power split feature. Uh, I know, for example, that the Tesla uh, high power wall charger uh, does in fact have that available as a feature. So if you have two of them, uh, they communicate with a, with a wire. I think it's like a LAN cable, more or less. Um, so that they do communicate. Also, I know PlugShare has at least one model, kind of designed for apartments and things, where you get full power from the one unit, uh, but then if you plug the second one in, it works, but the first one drops a bit. Now, what's really interesting about the Charge It is you don't need to be hardwired uh, from one unit to another. And I haven't seen this on any other EVSEs yet. They've always been hardwired. And that means, first of all, it's essentially got to be permanent. Uh, whereas with this one, I don't know. Let's, let's say you've got uh, a family. You've got two electric cars or a, a plug-in car and a, a plug-in hybrid. Uh, one person uses this at home and also at work. Uh, so you'd want it to be portable. But when you bring it back home, you want the power sharing to be able to work. So apparently it does that over the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi. I don't know exactly which, but it's a cool concept. Um, so with that geolocating, it also, it knows where you are. It knows if you're at home, I can only pull this much power or the other unit also has to throttle down. If I'm at work, I can only use this much power or that much power. If I'm in Mexico versus France, um, you know, it's got these smarts built in uh, that work with that geolocating. So now what I want to do is actually plug this in. We'll charge my car with it. I didn't charge my car last night just so I'd be able to do this. Uh, also, I have solar panels at my house and the weather today is partly cloudy, sometimes bright, sometimes dimmer. I want to show you a really cool trick too with solar and this unit. So over here, this is the charging area in my garage. Uh, I'll show you what this gray box is in a minute. Uh, over here, we just have a very typical 120 volt, 15 amp electric outlet. Now, of course, you could use something like this. Uh, works fine, it's slow, but it's acceptable for like a, a, a plug-in hybrid car. Um, but it's only 120 volt, it is slow. Uh, over here, this and this are NEMA 1450 electric outlets. So those are 50 amp, 240 volt power. Uh, if you're going to get an electric outlet installed in your garage, you're remodeling your garage or you think you will ever own an electric car, I highly recommend just installing a couple of uh, NEMA 1450 connectors around. So for my normal day-to-day -day charging, I'm using this amazing E EVSC. Um, it's reliable, it was inexpensive, I like it, but it's, it's a, a dumb EVSC. It, it doesn't have any advanced features or anything. Uh, small, light, and portable, I do like that. And it's a lower power rating, which is fine for my car because mine's a first generation with only a, like a 3.3 kilowatt charger. Now, what I can do here is I just have to plug it in and then I'll hang it on this screw so that all the weight's not hanging off there. Um, I also just got a regular hook on the wall over there, so my extra cable. 
I can just roll up and hang on that hook. But it is a simple EVSE, and I decided I wanted to know a little bit more, so I actually built this box. This is basically a remote on-off switch. Um, also, here I have a display saying what my power is. Um, voltage, how much current the car is drawing, uh, the power in watts, and my total energy use, which I reset once per month. Kind of use it as an energy tripodometer, know how much power my car is using every single month. So everything that I had to do as a do-it-yourselfer to add functionality, it's already built in right here. So I'm just going to plug this in. Oh, wrong connector. Oh, well, instead of having to rewire anything, I just pop this off, pop the other one on. So when you first plug it in and it gets power, you're going to get a little company logo, and then it's going to say ready to charge. We've got a nice little rainbow LED animating just showing you that it's ready. Uh, you could go into the menu right away by pressing and holding enter, but if we just look at the top first here, we've got some numbers there. Uh, inside that square, 200, means we're on a 200-some volt system. Uh, our actual voltage right now is 244 volts. That's a little high, but it's because we're right next to the neighborhood transformer, and we're also outputting power with our solar. Uh, 47 is the maximum output current that is adjustable, and in the software, this will go up to 48. Uh, lastly, 00A means zero amps. So that's the actual current that the car is pulling through the EVSE here. So let's just take a look into the menu. If I press and hold enter here, um, we have amperage, which is adjustable. If I press it, um, we can change our maximum current. It goes up to 48, and if we press the button repeatedly, it can go down. So we've got a wide range of current to choose from, uh, of course, depending on what you're hooked up to for power. There is a timer feature. We can go on in there, do a delayed start directly in here. Uh, there's additional set. Uh, if we go in there, right now all we're gonna see is the voltage at 200. Um, it's adjustable what our minimum voltage is for the unit to work. Uh, so that's handy if you have like bad power in your location uh, where it might be a little bit lower voltage than uh, what you'd otherwise expect. Uh, statistic is kind of a nice one. Um, I basically just plugged this in so it's not going to tell us, but it does keep track of uh, how much current you've used for how long to track your total kilowatt hour usage. And what's nice is even if you unplug this, plug it back in, it keeps those numbers. So there's some sort of non-volatile uh, memory in here. So maybe, uh, I, I kinda wanna open this up, see what's in here for a battery. Uh, and I mean, it's a pre-prototype, so I don't know. Uh, one other reason why I wanted to have this plugged in through this is it's also going to show us, for example, how much power this unit itself is going to use. Uh, right now it's saying 1.8, 1.9 watts. Now, I'm not sure how super accurate this is at low power, but uh, this does have Wi-Fi, this does have Bluetooth. Um, it's gonna use a little tiny bit of power while plugged in. Of course, two watts is nothing compared to when you actually plug your car in. Now, one fun other little thing I wanna show you right here. Uh, is this is sort of a smart home switch, and I even have it rigged up for voice control, although I don't have all the bugs worked out. Uh, Alexa, turn on electric car charging. Okay. So that's a little thing I designed. Um, I got a video about that if you want to check it out. Kind of a fun little project. And our charge it is ready to charge. So let's plug the car in. So I can see on here, two amps, four amps, six, seven amps. Uh, my car does just kind of throttle up. And now it's gonna get noisy here because a tractor is driving by. So now we're reading 12 amps 
And as we charge, we get a little bit of animation of blue LEDs going up. Uh, if there was a problem, if there was an error, we get some red LEDs here. Uh, maximum current is set to 22, just randomly, because that's what I just did. Uh, this car has a pretty low power charger, so it's only gonna run at 13 amps maximum. We see 13 amps here, and that's also uh, confirmed up on my other display here. Um, I also have a power meter on up here, and as this is charging, it shows both power and energy. So it says 3.2 kilowatt up here, 3.170 watt. This just has, you know, one more space of detail to it. Um, and we've only just been plugged in real shortly, so uh, we're only at 0 0.06 kilowatt hour there. But nice that we have that information. So this is the little real-time display that I put in for my solar. Uh, it, it is sunny out. Right now we're making about 5,000 watts or roughly 20 amps of current. Uh, if I had a car like a Chevy Bolt or one of the Teslas, maybe I'd be charging at like 32 amps and that would take up uh, more than all the electricity I'm making with the solar. Or alternatively, even if I was just charging my Mitsubishi iMev, but it was cloudy out and I wasn't making at least 13 amps, what we could do with the charge it is just turn down uh, the amps available setting on there and the car would use less power. It would use uh, only what's being created by the solar. Now we have to do that manually, but there's actually uh, an EVSE from Britain called the Zappy and that has a really cool feature where it will do this automatically. Uh, another part of it is that you have to connect it into your power system so that the, it can read and know how much power you're making. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to reduce the maximum current, but I'll point the camera up at the other screen so you can actually see in real time uh, how much power it's going through and how quick. So we'll take a look up here. So right now we're running 13 amps, but I'm gonna click down through the menu, uh, reducing the maximum current. So we're at 16, 15, and my, keep in mind my car only charges at a little bit more than 13, so we're not really limiting it yet. 14, okay, now I'm gonna go down to 13. Right away you see it drops below 13, because that's the maximum. I'm gonna go down to 12, boom. It's, it's real time, it responds. So I'm not even back out of the menu or anything. So I could look at my solar display and go, oh wow, I'm only making uh, 10 amps of solar power right now. Take it down to 10. This is gonna be anywhere the car calls for less than 10 amps. Uh, let's take it all the way down. Uh, let's, let's call it eight amps for right now and then uh, exit out of there. And we can see I'm pulling 1800 watts and the solar is making more than 1800 watts right now. So overall, I think the Charge It Universal Mobile Charger, it's a pretty good unit. It's got some cool features on there. I really wish I would have had the app available to me because a lot of those cool features are all available through the app and with this being just a pre-production model and them not having gone through the Kickstarter yet, unfortunately, right now as I'm shooting this, the app isn't available to me, but based on what I looked at at their web page, um, it really looks promising. Looks like there's gonna be some really nice features in here. So I'll keep you updated. Uh, probably once the Kickstarter is actually done uh, and I can get the app, I'll go through, I'll test that for you as well. And again, check uh, in the video description for the Kickstarter link and links to uh, some of my other projects that I've done here that I've kind of pointed out during this video. And until next time, stay charged up. Let's try it for the green screen again. I think the issues here are going to be...